Okay. Thank you, Jamie, and thank you all. I don't, I did not prepare the slides, uh, so I will um, just um, talk about um, these two chapters. Um, I'm listed as cognitive scientist and I, or cognitive science individual. I am affiliated with that, but actually I come from information science. So I'm primarily an information scientist and uh, I, the focus of my research is quantitative science studies. So my reading of this text and my comments on it would be from the perspective of quantitative science, stud science studies researcher and how what is presented is these two chapters can really help move that field forward. So that's the framework uh, of my reading of uh, this uh, book. Uh, so, um, and I apologize that I uh, ignore the guidance. I maybe should have read it closer. Um, so I hope you can bear uh, with what, what I have to say. Um, so the, what I find in chapter two uh, most valuable in a way is this movement uh, from entities or nouns or objects such as individual or structure or text uh, or even context to really mechanisms or processes or verbs, right? So the movement is from nouns to verbs and discourse here uh, could be considered as a verb. Uh, it is considered in, as uh, a way uh, of actually bridging what might have been uh, a divide uh, in science studies individuals focusing uh, on, on the one hand, uh, what has been mentioned in the previous presentation, uh, context of discovery, uh, which is focused mostly on uh, individuals and bottom up, and context of justification, on the other hand, uh, which is more top down. And discourse, uh, in a way, is uh, considered by Lut or proposed by Lut as a way to bridge these uh, two um, things that were considered separate throughout the history of uh, science studies uh, and actually uh, come up with a richer set of concepts, most of them focused on processes and actions, which can then uh, help move the field forward. He makes a distinction at the very beginning between text and context and uh, the individuals and said that text, uh, why uh, it has been focused on is not necessarily uh, so useful uh, because uh, it does not allow uh, for um, understanding the codes of the communication. And as a way forward, as was already mentioned, uh, he proposes uh, to focus on discourse uh, as a way to study communicative nature. Now he claims that that claim is not novel. That is something that scientists themselves have proposed going back uh, to Galileo. What I found a very, um, useful way of, of moving is his discussion on how this focus on discursive knowledge um, historically in the scientific revolution really was pivotal for changing the communication and control structures in sciences uh, at the above individual uh, level. And um, I think that his claim that the modern sciences are discursive and mediated and that the mediation of knowledge production by scientific literature uh, was historically made possible uh, after the invention of some of the communication technologies, uh, I think is uh, very important. Um, he does talk about uh, different um, entities that we can focus on, which is words or text and reference and discusses uh, their uh, selectivity. But I think actually I'll go again to the processes, uh, which I believe are more important. And one of them uh, that he particularly uh, focuses on is the process of selection 
which is important, and the role of these referencing networks, which he conceived as this discursive environment, is really to select. Uh, and this selection is really important for the evolutionary uh, perspective for the understanding of scientific uh, communication. Uh, of course, selection is just one mechanism. A very important uh, other mechanism is variation. And later on in this chapter, he does uh, talk about uh, variation as well uh, when he brings in um, Lumen's view, but also uh, better, uh, better perceived in the context of, on, of Simon's, uh, Herbert Simon's uh, theory of complex systems, uh, where uh, in uh, the mechanisms of the dynamics of communication, we should focus on three things, which is interaction or this variation that Lou talks about, which is at the level of text, uh, organization uh, itself, which actually occurs uh, when this variation has to be organized. And finally, this self-organization, uh, which is at the level of globalization. Uh, so again, I find these three mechanisms very enlightening in terms of uh, what uh, could be a focus on um, of the potential studies of science uh, as uh, different mechanisms or dynamics. And throughout both of these chapter, uh, he does bring again a lot of words that have to do with dynamics and processes and moves away from structures and individual um, ent uh, individual entities. Uh, for uh, He also cares about the empirical component uh, and the empirical component uh, requires not just observation by measurement, but also measurement. And he raises the importance and the question of uh, measurement. Uh, he may not discuss that explicitly, but for example, when he uh, talks about um, words and co-words being less stable and references more stable uh, for discursive, in a way he suggests the type of entities that could be measured or followed in their interactions and the outcomes that they could produce. Um, he, uh, so to conclude uh, my discussion on the um, second chapter, I think the key here is um, introducing uh, discourse as, the, as this way to mediate between context of the discovery and context uh, of uh, justification. Uh, and that is uh, in a way possible. Um, and that can also allow focusing on discourses uh, can allow movement outside uh, of uh, sciences as well, uh, because discourses can allow exchanges. Again, it's this flows, it's the mechanism, these exchanges uh, within science, but between disciplines, which are these higher order entities, right? These are these uh, structures, uh, but it can also help mediate between science uh, and uh, society. Uh, which uh, is something that is increasingly becoming uh, important. Of course, it was important in studies, science studies before, uh, but I think we are re visiting that. So, so the power of this course lies uh, in that. He also then uh, finds this focus uh, on uh, this course uh, to understand processes such as selection or a repeated selection uh, of the knowledge claim, uh, stabilization uh, or coding uh, and meta stabilization in the global next level order because he's focusing on different levels uh, of order. Um, but he offers then a way to empirically study uh, this uh, if we focus on uh, communication as an operation, right? So uh, he says we should move from social network, uh, which find what well, he says, his stability in human and institutional agents as curious of communication on the ground. And by no means he's saying we shouldn't do that. He himself has done that. And in the next chapter, he actually discusses how we can project and how we can understand. But he says the 
more fruitful way uh, in a way could be uh, if we focus on communication rather than this added is uh, as a way uh, to operationalize the action or something that uh, disappears and what this can produce empirically and this is something that he has done throughout the time uh, is these maps uh, and most of the times maps are um, um, identified with uh, structures, but uh, what Lou has done throughout his research and here is that we can use maps to understand again the dynamics or the changes of various dimensions of the sciences uh, in uh, the uh, in the particular details. So he is again focusing on evolution and dynamics. In the next chapter, uh, he uh, proposes that. Um, that there are uh, these historically again uh, that we can focus on uh, three uh, types of uh, entities or they are social, textual, and con cognitive and uh, that they each may have their own dynamic but actually uh, there is uh, which he calls sub dynamics and that sub dynamics is uh, functioning, but they also select upon each other. So there is a larger lever dynamics uh, of what he calls when these structures uh, um, tend to merge in the triple helix way that he has described uh, in, in other uh, places. He does start this chapter uh, with uh, the sociology of scientific knowledge and the definition put forward by Bloor on uh, what um, knowledge is, uh, which is what people believe is knowledge. And he then goes on to discuss true and false knowledge. And uh, I think the key piece here, which was mentioned in the uh, previous um, discussion was this issue of justification. Uh, so, and justification of the knowledge occurs, uh, it can occur bottom up, right? Uh, when the individual is uh, testing hypotheses or measuring things, but justification also occurs at the later stages where text is produced and shared with the community through the refereeing process. And afterwards, once this text is part of the archive, which is something that Lou talks about this as well, that the text goes uh, from being offered as a knowledge claim to shifting to the archival record, which has again uh, different different um, histories and meanings. Uh, that in that instance, uh, what what becomes uh, important to understand is this pro different processes or different justification uh, that that occur. Uh, I think he, what I really appreciate in this chapter uh, is his call that we should, or we, or people who study science should move away. And these are very unproductive dimensions when we talk about cognitive versus social or internal versus external, uh, right? So uh, that he strongly argues again, uh, against pursuing those and, Everything he puts forward in these two chapters, in a way, is a way to move away from those, but uh, towards more uh, a unified uh, way of, of dealing uh, with, with, with those. Um, so I'll, I'll conclude with what I found uh, uh, to be a call from this action, which is uh, that in advancing science uh, studies, uh, we should have a shift from historical observations to what he calls specified expectations. And that is a crucial uh, shift. I think in uh, what he also argues where cybernetics here can play a really useful role rather than the systems theory is that it can offer a way to construct novel, completely novel concepts that have not been studied away, uh, so far. And that in what I see it as Lutz 
call here uh, is the crucial step here would be not so much to tweak the measurements and uh, not necessarily to uh, go for the grand theory of science, uh, but really utilizing uh, these different, like enhancing the theoretical perspective, but not in the very simplistic inductive deductive, but really as a way to raise new questions and interpret uh, the results uh, in this different, very, very different context uh, of raising uh, uh, and cybernetics can offer new possibilities of having new constructs that can help move to novel questions in science of science, probably not in cybernetics itself, and therefore is something that should be pursued by this community. Thank you.